again we got this golden opportunity to be able to sing together no matter how we sing we keep up the spirit of singing and that's all that matters and those who are fortunate will be able to join it let us thank bhagwan offer our grateful pranams for this wonderful opportunity now before we submit our today's prayers at the holy feet of bhagwan let us go through an experience which i think is very beautiful and that i should share with all of you many people who come to the ashram have been devotees for quite some time now at least for 20 years would know about kumari priti shrinivas she was the captain of under 19 tamil nadu women's cricket team and she led the state team to the national championship in 97 at the age of 17 she was also a title holder swimmer having won a state gold in 50 m best stroke and silver in other events but unfortunately the misfortune struck her when she went with her friends to have a dip in the ocean in pondicherry by a cruel twist of fate a huge wave struck her after which she lost consciousness for some time <clears throat> and then to her horror she found that she was paralyzed below the neck 
and she was put on a wheelchair. Just imagine for a moment, put ourselves now in her place, the cruel blow that was given to her by fate. What else could we call it? Why would this happen? Now, after that, the parents and this girl, they came to Bhagwan, and Bhagwan said she would be all right. But then when Bhagwan gives such a blessing, we would never know what he really meant. Till this day, she comes to the ashram in a wheelchair, but the blow did not destroy her. Instead, she was able to come out with the sufficient courage and patience. By Bhagwan's grace, she was able to survive the blows that followed even after that. Her father passed away. And imagine the life, the whole life continues to be a struggle even now, but then <coughs> you would never see a more cheerful person then. She said, for a long time she thought she did not have any qualification to talk about the grace of Bhagwan, the glory of Bhagwan. It would be so inadequate. <coughs> but later she understood that <coughs> the less qualified you are, the more you can talk about His glory, because that's when the grace flows. Blessed are the humblest. And then she began. She gave three <coughs> incidents where how she could feel the flow of grace in unexpected ways. This is very important because many of us are very, very healthy and we have all the basic blessings of life and still we imagine something lacking in life and keep complaining all the time. We do not think of the blessings we already have, we already enjoy. We only imagine things that did not happen to us, comparing ourselves with other people. And that's why Bhagwan used to make us sing the song, Kurei Undru Mille. I have no complaints, I have no complaints. When you are there to give me what I need, you may not give me what I want, but you definitely give me what I need. <coughs> Now, Fiji Srinivasan, <coughs> at one time when they went to an astrologer, the astrologer said it would be very helpful if she could have the darshan of the crescent moon on the third day the third day crescent of the moon is very special, very auspicious. So they advised her to have to... But then imagine at six o'clock, six p.m. in the evening, she would be carried to the bed and she would spend the whole evening only in bed. She could not get to see the evening outside. 
How could she see the rise of the moon, the crescent? Days passed, months passed. She was unable to have the Chandra Darshan, as they used to call it, the third day crescent of the moon. Then one day she had to depend upon so many people to go out and one day it happened that many of her friends came and they decided to take her out. When they wanted her to fix a date, she did not calculate anything, she did not consider it deeply or anything, she just fixed random, random choice. She just fixed a date and said, we would go out that day. They all agreed happily and then she felt that it was the right date. She did not know why, but she knew by intuition that it was okay. And then when that day came, they took her out, they wheeled her around the mountain. They were going towards the Surya Linga, the Sun Linga. It was getting to be evening twilight and then the moon appeared, the crescent, not very bright and what is more, it was in November, the third, crescent, third day crescent would stay only for one hour. After that you cannot see it. Now that day when she saw the crescent, somebody said it was the third day and very auspicious. And that's when she knew, aha, this is why Bhagwan made me fix this day and this is why it felt right. It was a spontaneous, random choice. And it was exactly what she wanted all along. She could have darshan of the third day crescent. She felt very, very happy. And when they went near the Surya Linga, it was the sun, sun god, in the form of Linga. So that day she, she could have darshan of the moon and the sun, both. A very strange way of getting one's wish fulfilled but it happened by the grace of Bhagwan. She celebrates this event, thanking profusely Bhagwan. And then the other one is more important, very strange happening. She came to be introduced to one Mr. Muruganandam, and when he wanted to come and see her again, the day he chose to come, they had fixed the Nitya Puja, the ashram, and also Annadana, the feeding of the devotees. So she rang up to say, why don't you come on this day so that you could come with us to the ashram? And he did. And when he entered the ashram, he felt the peace, the tremendous peace that prevails here, the peace of Bhagwan. They say the criteria, criterion of a jnani is only this peace. So he was very impressed. And then, of course, the afternoon arati happened and then uh, took place and then. Uh, after that they had food and left. After he went back, Muruganandam phoned up to say that this Yogi Ram Surutkumar Nama that was being sung in the ashram, it was reverberating all the time. He was unable to forget it. It was going on and on without his volunteering. He was saying, what is this? It has taken over. She felt very happy. <coughs> and then 
December 1st, December 2nd, Preeti and her mother, they were going to come to the ashram. There would be less crowded. And when she came here inside, she went round and at about 2.30 she went back home. Then she received a call from Mr. Murugananda and he had a very strange experience to narrate. He said that he and his friends had gone out of Chennai and were returning and then they wanted to have some food and they were going towards a hotel when a strange young beggar approached Murugananda particularly. He was in rags, he looked dirty, but he was very young and strong. He came and made a very peculiar request to Murugananda. He said, Will you please feed me? I want to be fed. Murugananda thought it was a very strange request from a beggar, coming from a beggar. And then he looked at this man well and then he saw how young and strong he was. Murugananda, as a principal, would not give coins to any beggars. He would buy food and give them, but not any coins. It was very strange, this young man knew exactly who to approach and asked exactly what Murugananda would do. So Murugananda said, Why? Why are you begging? You look very young and strong, you could do some work and earn some money. Then that beggar youth said, Oh, there is this Thiruvannamalai Arunachali Shira mountain and somebody is living on top there. He is a thief, Arunachali Shira. He is a thief. He has entered into this body and he is not allowing me to work. He allows me only to beg. He is not allowing me to work. He is in control of this. I have no control over myself. What a strange reply. Then Murugananda said, Okay, I will get you food. He said, No, no, I would like to come with you people and have food with you. And he said it with a certain authority. Again, he was taken aback, Murugananda, but then he said, Okay. This man is asking for food, not for coins. Suppose I gave you coins, what would you do? You don't earn anything at all, people don't throw any coins to you. The beggar said, Yes, yes, sometimes I get money from people, but then you see, in my native village, they are building a house for me. So I send all the money that I get there to my place to help them. So as a matter of principle, if I accept money, I have to send it to the village. So when I feel hungry, I want only food, not the coins. So Murugananda, unable to say anything more, took him for food. And then they gave him some nice, sumptuous food. And the beggar youth started to eat. And he was eating like a, it was a ritual, you know. He was completely absorbed in his eating. And Murugananda was trying to make a conversation with him. He kept on asking something. At one point, the beggar said, Will you please stop talking? I'm eating. I would like to eat. I don't want to talk while eating. You know, he cut him to size, put him in place, and Murugananda was once again taken aback. What author with what authority? This beggar is speaking to me, he is commanding me. 
and I am giving him food and the way he talks. What a strange experience. In some strange way, he was reminded of Thiruvannamalai beggar, the beggar saint. And that's why after that the youth said, thank you and left. So Muruganandam wanted to share this experience with the Preeti Srinivasan and then he rang up and said, Preeti ji, just see, this beggar appearing all of a sudden from nowhere demanding food and insisting on coming with us and sharing food. He was a beggar begging for food but he was no beggar at all, he spoke with such authority. Chileshwara, the great thief, has taken over this beggar, not allowing me to earn money, to work and earn money. He wants me to only beg and if I get money from begging, I'm sending it to my native place because they're building something for me, they're building a house for me. Then Preeti knew instantly it was Yogi Ram Sarat Kumar because the day was December 1st, Jayanti Day. She said, don't you know, yesterday all this has happened and yesterday the Jayanti Day of Yogi Ram Sarat Kumar, the Divine Beggar, I'm very sure it was He who played this Leela with you. Then Muruganandam said, no, 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 He said, that this, his people are all there in the native place and they are building a house for him. And suddenly Preeti remembered that they were building Bhagwan's temple in Nadara, the native village of Bhagwan. They were renovating the house where he lived and also the ashram was building a temple for Bhagwan. So she immediately said, now I'm even more sure it is only Bhagavan, Yogi Ram Sarat Kumar, who appeared to you in that form and demanded, you are very lucky, you are very fortunate that he has taken over without your asking. You said the Nama was reverberating all the time, it was going on without your volition and now you see he came and took food from your hand. You have been very specially blessed by him. What a strange experience. I found it very interesting and I thought we should share and enjoy this Leela of Bhagwan. And Preeti goes on to say, narrate another event which she thinks is no small grace from Bhagwan. On the 2nd December, she wanted to come to the ashram, have darshan of Bhagwan and go around, do ashram Girivalam. But it was getting delayed, nothing was working out for her because she had to depend upon so many people for everything. So finally she was able to make it and then she said she could come to the ashram only at eleven o'clock. She felt a little bad about all those things, thinking that why, why wouldn't Bhagwan allow me to come? Anyway, she made it and when she was coming around making her Giribalam, the ashram of Pradakshina, when she came to Goshala, there was a very strange scene that she witnessed. A cow was giving birth, whole thing. And what was more, it was a Friday and the cow gave birth to twins and both were female. We say that it's a very special place if a female calf is born on a Friday. It was not one but two and she had come to the spot exactly at the time that things started and she could witness the whole thing, the whole birth. She felt very blessed, she thought. It was extraordinary grace and that's why she was being delayed, not knowing that being delayed was a great blessing. 
she was grumbling, but then now she knew that everything was grace right from the beginning. Preeti concludes that she had so many wishes in the beginning, but later on, slowly, slowly, life, the struggle, <coughs> the life itself has become a struggle for her, and it taught her, by Bhagawan's grace, she learned the wisdom that whatever comes to her is a blessing. She no more grumbles that something is not happening the way she wants. She knows that everything that happens is a kind of blessing and she has no more to complain. What a great wisdom! How many of us have got it in life? Bhagavan often said, whatever happens, happens only by Father's will, and whatever happens is pure grace. Whatever happens is necessary for our spiritual growth. We have to, we have come into this world to learn the lessons that we have to learn, and everything happens only towards that, and it's for our spiritual growth. Preeti understood the idea behind the design of everybody's life. So let us also learn this from her. Of course, Bhagwan has always been saying that. Now we have an example. Now, this flow of grace that she is able to feel, she has become an inspiration to many people in her condition. She has started, she has founded Soul Free, a structure through which she helps lots of people with, you know, people who have been injured the spinal column, and uh, because of which they suffer. They suffer not only physically but also mentally, because people, when they live at home, they have to depend upon people, the brothers and sisters, relatives, for every little thing that people get easily irritated. And you can imagine their plight. They can't do anything without somebody's help. And every time they look up to someone for help, unless they do it happily and willingly, you know what a struggle it is, what a hell it can be. Now, Preeti is giving motivation talks and cheers them up, saying that, it's not a condition for committing suicide. It's not like that. You can still make the best of your life and be a model for other people. This is what we see in this Free Soul Foundation. People can contribute money or any help because Preeti is struggling and she is able to manage somehow, but always help is required. Now we shall submit our prayers at the feet of Bhagwan. Bhagwan, 